Hello everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We are back in the real world and I have traveled to the island of Kos because uh, one of the side missions that I want to do before finishing the game is apparently in this fortress over here. But um, before I start with that, um, I would like to share a few thoughts on the DLC that we finished in the previous episode, as I said. And yeah, as I mentioned, I like this one a lot better than uh, the first one. I mean, as far as Legacy of the First Blade is concerned, I did like the idea of it. You know, introducing the uh, Persian assassins and then making a connection between them, Cassandra and Aya. So the idea was pretty good, but the execution was not uh, quite as good. Uh, mainly because apparently the people who made that DLC didn't get the memo that they were supposed to write an RPG. Or at least a somewhat RPG-ish game with decisions and stuff and the uh, possibility to roleplay your character, at least to some extent. But um, I have talked about that before, and uh, compared to that, I thought this uh, new DLC was definitely an improvement. Um, I know that some people don't really like these mythological elements in Assassin's Creed, because um, while they are still explained in terms of science fiction, you know, as simulations and ancient technologies and so on, they have a very heavy fantasy element, and I think not everyone likes that. But personally, as someone who is very interested in mythologies, I really enjoy these. Um, in Origins, I really liked the Curse of the Pharaohs DLC uh, for the same reason. And one of the reasons why I like them is because um, they can go really crazy with their environmental design and create all these um, fantastical, amazing landscapes that you usually don't have in the real world because, you know, it's supposed to look somewhat realistic. And yeah, they just can go a little bit wacky in these uh, mythological DLCs and personally I like that a lot. I understand that it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it is definitely mine. And of the three chapters of um, this DLC, I would say my favorite one was uh, the one in Hades. Because um, while Hades probably had the least interesting um, environment, I mean, it wasn't as pretty as Elysium and not as um, amazing as Atlantis, um, I thought it had like the best um, premise and setup and overall the best story. Um, which is something that I can't say for the other two parts of the DLC. I will get to that later. So it had a pretty basic setup. Cassandra uh, fell into Hades, she killed Cerberus, I mean she didn't really have much of a choice, and then Hades wanted her to find a replacement. And while she was doing it, she met all these people from her uh, life that had died, which I thought was a pretty nice touch, interacting with these uh, people again and um, helping them to a better place or at least come to terms with their situation. Um, that was a pretty neat idea and, you know, it did connect that DLC to the main game in ways that um, the previous DLC didn't. That one just felt a little bit disjointed from the main game because Cassandra was acting completely different than she did before. But um, uh, in this case we had these references to what Cassandra did before and how she interacted with people before. So again, that was pretty uh, well done. Um, so yeah, um, story-wise I thought this one was my favorite part. Also, um, it had like the least amount of grindy side content. I mean, you had like these keepers insights that you were supposed to collect. But that was pretty much all of the like fetch quest kind of stuff that you had to do in order to finish uh, the, the part of that DLC. In the other DLC, uh, in the other chapters we had stuff where you had to recruit a number of people or you had to collect knowledge and there was a lot of just running around and grindy stuff that didn't really have a strong story component. And the Hades uh, part of the DLC um, had not so much of that. So overall I think it was just 
the best structured and best paced uh, DLC of the three chapters. Um, as for the other two, I did like them, but um, as I mentioned, I felt that in both cases, the premise for the story of these chapters was a little bit, let's say, labored. <laughs> I did already talk about um, the problem with the rebellion in Elysium, which they never really explained all that well. I mean, yes, they said uh, Adonis wants to go to Aphrodite and that's why he's starting a rebellion. But um, they never really explained why anyone else wanted to join that rebellion or just very vaguely. <laughs> I mean, we met that one blind person with the horse and he said that um, Persephone punished him for being critical. But they never really mentioned why he was being critical. There just was this weird disconnect between the fact that apparently so many people were so unhappy with uh, that place that they started a violent rebellion that could possibly get them killed for a second time and sent to Hades. While at the same time you saw all these people who seemed to live very happy lives and, you know, a literal paradise and people seemed to be uh, very content in that place. and. Um, they never really resolved this disconnect between what they told us and what they showed us in Elysium. I mean, there were hints about Persephone being controlling by using these torches of Hypnos, but they never really explained that all that well either, whether it only applied to the soldiers or everyone in um, Elysium. So, yeah, um, it was it was rather um, un uncertain why people wanted to get rid of Persephone so badly that they started a rebellion. Still, as the player, you were supposed to side with the rebellion to some extent. I mean, you could kind of play the different factions there, but in the end, if you wanted to go along with the story, you kind of had to progress um, the rebellion story as well and help Adonis uh, to some degree. And, um, well, like I said, there wasn't really that much motivation for Cassandra to do that, especially since Adonis came across as somewhat spoiled and egoistic. And, you know, he started this rebellion, but he didn't really care about the people in Elysium. He only wanted to leave that place. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That was a bit of a problem with the Elysium part that um, Cassandra's motivation was not well explained, that the premise was a bit weird with that whole rebellion in paradise thing. And they could have done more with that by exposing the fact that the paradise isn't actually a paradise and, you know, there's all kinds of bad stuff going on. But they didn't really do that to the extent that it would um, uh, justify that kind of rebellion. But still, I did uh, overall enjoy that part, specifically like the interactions between the Isu and it gave us a very nice insight into Isu uh, politics and society, so I did like that uh, part of um, that chapter. And as for Atlantis, again, um, the premise seemed a bit weird. Why should Cassandra, who is not a judge, who is not an Isu, be uh, appointed a judge in Atlantis? Um, I can kind of see why they wanted to do that, but again, it, it felt a little bit labored to have that premise. Especially since, even though she was a judge and she was supposed to keep like the peace, she was still like infiltrating people and killing soldiers if, you know, required for the quest. So, again, there was this weird disconnect between um, what Cassandra was supposed to do and what she was actually doing. And I understand why that is. I mean, you kind of need to have a conflict for the game to work because the gameplay is based on infiltration and combat and if you take it away all you have is like dialogue and cutscenes so you needed the rebellion in Elysium to have a conflict and you needed Cassandra to still infiltrate and kill people in Atlantis even though she was supposed to bring peace to that place but you know it, it just made for like a weird contrast that uh, didn't really exist in that form in Hades because uh, there was obvious uh, reason for conflict to be in Hades and it didn't feel weird that Cassandra was doing what she was doing while she was there. But still, um, apart from, you know, the somewhat uh, contrived story for Elysium and Atlantis, I, I definitely 
uh, enjoyed this change of pace. And um, speaking of premise and uh, setup, I would say overall that is probably the biggest flaw of the DLC as a whole. Um, the fact that it's framed as a simulation. So if it's just simulation, and I mentioned this before on uh, numerous occasions, it just doesn't feel all that important. Um, I would even say it almost feels pointless. It's not entirely pointless because um, the idea is that Cassandra went through all of these trials to learn to work with these staff and I guess that uh, goal was achieved so um, these simulations are not entirely pointless but your decisions that you made in uh, these trials feel kind of pointless because they didn't really affect anyone and a lot of the decisions that you were supposed to make were decisions like do I want to help these people or uh, take a shortcut to my my goal or whatever you know when Aita told us you know you can look uh, behind the door or you can sacrifice um, but you have to sacrifice the people for that again if these people are just simulations then there is really no reason to not sacrifice them or in um, Hades when you were helping uh, Brasidas and Phoebe why help them if they're not actually Brasidas and Phoebe if they are just a program running somewhere right um, and I think the writers did realize that this is a problem because they were being really really vague about it um, I think they realized they have to address this question was any of this actually real at the end when Cassandra spoke to Alethea again but Alessia was being very evasive, so she was like, yeah, they're kind of like memories, but they're also kind of real in some form. And when Cassandra asked her whether she actually met uh, Phoebe and Brasidas and uh, Leonidas, again, Alessia was very evasive by saying, well, they're always part of you, and I mean, that doesn't really answer the question, so... Um, I think the writers were trying to be vague and evasive on purpose because they realize if they just outright tell um, the player that what you did is not real, it's just simulation, um, that would take away from the meaning of what you did. Now, you might argue that um, Assassin's Creed games are, you know, always a simulation in the first place. I mean, first of all, they're games, so of course none of the people are real. But, you know, within the game, you play um, someone who goes into an animus and you could say that everything inside the animus is a simulation. But in previous uh, games this has been different because you were reliving real memories and interactions with real people. So it wasn't just some, some imagined scenario or you know just an interactive program that you played in the animus, but it was real to some degree. Um, so I feel putting Cassandra in this simulation is different in that regard than just going into the animus and reliving someone's memories. And I mean that's why I personally prefer my own explanation for these simulations by saying yeah they're simulations but the people in there are real because the Isu stored their consciousness in these simulations so that they have their own private matrix um, since they couldn't survive uh, the solar flare physically, they could at least survive them as consciousness. And the people in there are also real because um, the Isu populate their matrixes with real people, so they have people to rule over because, you know, that's what they like to do. <laughs> and while it's still a simulation and not entirely real, at least the people um, you interact with are real. And I feel that just gives more gravitas to your decisions when you decide the fate of these people, right? Also, I think it perfectly explains this weird state that the Isu are in, where on the one hand they've been dead for 50,000 years, but at the same time they are still around somehow, at least Juno and Alethea is, and they're still being worshipped by these people, you know, here in classical times, in these very specific forms. I mean, if they were gone for tens of thousands of years, even if some memory of these Isu remained among humans, um, the worship of these gods would have shifted a lot. So um, I think 
it it would explain that you know the ESO can still interact with the real world in some limited capacity via holograms which probably would be enough for people of this age to believe that they are gods if they can just you know pop up from out of nowhere or whatever so you would uh, have an explanation for all these different religions that are based on the ESO but at the same time um, they're not really um, existent in this world anymore as corporal entities. So yeah, that is my personal explanation for uh, the state of the ISU and I think it makes much more sense than to say, oh, well these are just simulations and they're not really real and the people are not really real or just whatever vague evasive stuff Alethia told us. <laughs> so yeah, but like I said, um, if we ignore the somewhat shaky premise of the DLC and some of the chapters itself, um, I definitely had a lot of fun playing this. Um, I don't know, maybe I should say a few words on the real world storyline, but um, there isn't really that much to say because that story always moves so slowly that sometimes I forget it exists at all or what we were supposed to be doing. <laughs> so I feel I will maybe talk about that whole Layla story once I'm done with the game and see where this is going to lead in the end. Because at the moment I feel, yeah, every now and then they bring up uh, some some scenes from uh, the present day, but I'm, I'm not really seeing where this is headed at the moment, other than the fact that, you know, Layla is learning to use the staff like Cassandra is, but um, at the moment I can't really say much about that. But yeah, um, I guess that's enough about the DLC for now, but um, I am glad that I played this because um, I just like the mythological aspects of it and that made up for the weaknesses that the DLC had. But yeah, now let's um, get some business done here in the real world. Now I did ask you um, what side missions I should be playing before finishing the game. And there's two quests that I um, wrote down that people mentioned. One is this over here, a business opportunity, so that's what we're going to do today. And another one that was mentioned is um, this one. One really, really bad day. <laughs> so these are the two side missions that I will do in the next um, few episodes. We'll see how long they'll take. And then finally I will be doing this one, The Great Escape. And if you think there's any other side mission, whether it's one of these uh, uh, blue ones or a normal one, um, let me know in the comments and I will add it to my list. But for now, it's really only those three quests that I still have on my to-do list. But yeah, um, let's check out this fort. I may have to infiltrate it if I want to get to my quest. Yeah. Oh, Marcos? Is it THE Marcos? From Kefalonia? Huh, it does have a picture, so I, I can't really say. But um, yeah, first of all, let's make sure we take all the soldiers. And I will try to avoid the soldiers for the most part, but I may have to remove a few of them if I want to talk to the prisoner here. Okay. We have a hidden entrance. I mean, usually I don't... I don't want to be spotted here. ...don't use these hidden entrances all that much because I prefer to infiltrate from from above. But, I don't know, maybe this would work out for this situation. Okay, um, I guess I will have to deal with him and, yeah, I'm not sure if a non-violent takedown is going to work on him, so I guess I'll have to resort to lethal methods here for 
for a change. Gods can set fire oh, out. Well, <laughs> uh, will I ever learn not to get too close to torches? Probably not. It's like 107 episodes into the game and I still set myself on fire occasionally. Um, okay. Help! Somebody! Anybody! <sighs> Yeah, I'm on my way. But while I'm here, I may want to disable the signal fire, just in case. There we go. Um, looks like this guy is on his own. What? Cassandra? Oh, what is no. him? Kept myself busy, haven't I? No time to explain here. Get me out. <laughs> okay, I hope I can just free you and you're not going to cause too much ruckus. Oh, I have to carry him out of here, huh? Yeah, I probably do. Okay. In that case, I definitely have to remove a few more soldiers. Um, okay. What would be the fastest way out of here if I can't climb? Um, I mean, I'm not sure if I can use that secret entrance. I mean, we have like the big gate over here and there aren't really that many people on this side. So I might be able to just take him and make a run for the gate you're as nimble as ever now carry me to my house on the other side of the mountain i have to carry you the whole way uh, uh, i'm so weak i'm so frail uh-huh oh, fine <laughs> first let's get out of here and then we can wonder about what we will do next okay so how how did you even get here? Why are you not on Kefalonia? I mean, maybe it's for the best that you're not on Kefalonia because <laughs> there's kind of a plague on Kefalonia. And I'm totally not responsible for that. Totally not. <laughs> anyway, um, I think I may want to use my horse. So. Oh right, I'm still uh, using like the, the Hades horse. Can I not put you on the horse? There we go. Yeah. Now, let's go. <laughs> oh. Another vineyard? I am nothing if not consistent, my friend. <laughs> oh, so you uh, started the vineyard here. Okay. I, I guess that is at least somewhat respectable business. <laughs> anyway, where exactly do I need to go? Maybe Off I should we go now. put a mark on it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly he can jump off the horse again. You're welcome. So, tell me, why why are you here? Cassandra, welcome to the newest of the Marcos estates. I wasn't expecting company, but one must always be prepared. Wine? Marcos, I can't believe you're here. Believe it, my friend. I'm not a man of one city, but of all cities. Who am I to deny the rest of the Greek world what I have to offer? <laughs> Okay, um, so I wonder what did you do to land in prison? And yeah, why did you leave Kefalonia? What brings you to Kos, of all places? I've learned a thing or two about soil. 
Turns out Kefalonia wasn't the best place for grapes. Plus, the locals here love wine. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves wine. <laughs> On top of that, Kefalonia isn't as uh, busy as it was before. Yeah. Plague came from <laughs> cow sauce and many died. About that. It was that. bad for business. But I'm glad that you managed to escape uh, before before you got sick. So, how long have you been here? Been here long? Long enough to establish myself as the foremost wine cellar in Kos. Well, the one wine cellar in Kos. The koans will come around eventually. <laughs> so, you are not really successful right now. <laughs> You've come a long way. Well, at least geographically you have. You made it a long way from home. I could say the same to you. Did you find what you were looking for? I did. I found my mother. What a coincidence! I found my mama too! <laughs> really? Here, in Kos? Since Kos is her home, Kos is my home too! Say hello, mama! Hmm. That's not your mother. It's nice to meet her. How? How do you know it's not his mother? Just because he's always talking bullshit? Your mama? You told me your mother was dead. Right, this is my adopted mama. Ah. We've become so close, she wouldn't have it any other way. Come on, Marcos. The truth. <laughs> well, <laughs> mama is the owner of the vineyard. When her husband met his untimely death, it was going to be auctioned off. Something had to be done. So you stepped in to help. <laughs> How generous. It's ridiculous a wonderful lady such as mama cannot inherit her own property. Now we run the vineyard together. Isn't that right, Mama? Nah. I, I guess she already sampled she put up uh, a fuss if she disagreed. It's her land, but she shares it with her precious son, me! Well, um, I'm happy that stuff worked out for you so well. <laughs> it's a nice place you've commandeered, Marcos. <laughs> if I didn't know you so well, I'd think you were serious. I'm always laughing these days. You weren't laughing much when you were tied up in that fort. <laughs> uh, about that, I have a bit of a problem on my hands. Evidently. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> but it's something I know you could help me with, my friend. I know your credentials. Okay, well, for all time's sake, I'm listening. Go on. You know me. I borrow some drag me, and before I know it, they're calling me the Khan of course. All thanks to mm -hmm. the Cerberus, whom I owe the most. The Cerberus? First the Cyclops, now this? Don't tell me it's a three-headed dog. Don't be ridiculous. This is nothing like the Cyclops. This time I wish to make a peace offering with nothing less than my finest wine. Finest? <laughs> Palatable, maybe. Cassandra, you're like family to me. And since I'm family to you, I'm sure you wouldn't mind helping. You're sure, are you? I promise I can afford to pay you this time. Just take my wine to the Cerberus. Simple. You're being very manipulative. Do you know that Marcos using family as an excuse to uh, make Cassandra help you? And since Cassandra has already killed the real Cerberus, I'm pretty sure um, that this is not a three-headed dog. As a matter of fact, I'm guessing it's not a dog at all, but a person. Um, but okay, I guess I will help you for all time's sake. Fine. For all time's sake. Indeed. I can always count on you. And the Cerberus can count on a nice wine pairing with dinner. Take it to his house. The Cerberus better not bite me. <laughs> uh, this can only go poorly. I I have a bad feeling about this. Okay. Um. Let's let's have a look at the follow-up quest to this. Um. Uh. Okay. I don't care about. These. This is the one that I'm looking for. Old friends, old problems. Deliver Marcus's wine to Cerberus. <laughs> okay, let's do it. It's not too far away. So I hope we can do this without uh, big problems. Alright, apparently this is the person we're looking for. Hmm. I wonder why he's called Cerberus. I mean, in case of the Cyclops, it was because he had one eye. But he certainly doesn't have three heads. 
Are you the Cerberus? Who wants to know? Whew. Only one head. <laughs> yes. A gift for you. Have you ever had Marcos's wine? It's the best of the best. What's so good about it? Um, it's sweet, it's rich. And both of them are lies. How do you know? Have you tried the wine? Or do you just assume that it tastes poorly? <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's sweet. It's very sweet. Perfect with chestnut bread. He's not gonna win me over with wine. I never forget whose purse my drachmi goes into. It's a peace offering. I thank you for waiting so patiently for him to pay you back. Hmm. Then drink with me, if you think it's so good. Sure, I'll drink. No thanks. Hmm. 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 Yeah, sure. I guess if if I need to do that to convince you. All right. Oh great! No, that's just the way. <laughs> I should have known that Marcus is up for some shady business again. Um, okay. Well, maybe, maybe it's time for me to make a quick escape here. <laughs> I should try to stay out of sight. Uh, what the hell, Marcus? Why can't you just stay out of trouble for once? I mean, if you want to get in trouble, that's your business, but don't drag me into this all the time. <laughs> I just hope the poison isn't fatal. I mean, Cassandra might be immune, or at least somewhat immune to some poisons because of her Isu bloodline, but <laughs> still. <laughs> anyway, Marcus. We need to dock. Ah, she's returned! Let me guess. The Cerberus wants to order another amphora's worth. The wine made us sick, Marcos. Impossible! It was my mm. best batch. I double-checked. If you wanted him dead, you should have told me. I did tell you. I'm a new Marcos. I don't want people dead. I want what's right. But that isn't good news. No, it's not good. The Cerberus will come after you. What to do? What to do? What am I saying? Cassandra, this is when we strike. We? Strike? You and what army? <laughs> I have a demigod for a best friend. That's an army as strong as 20 soldiers. <laughs> you have it all figured out, don't you? There's only three of them, plus their little group of men. It will be easy, my friend. Three? Why do you think they're called the Cerberus? Oh. Because they're three brothers, triplets. Each with as much bite as the last. I see. Great. So there are two others that'll want revenge. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That means two of them haven't tried my <laughs> wine. <laughs> well... So what are you going to do? They need to be spooked. As Mama says, a threat is like a bear. Very scary. We'll burn the Cerberus's farm. Specifically, the silos. That's oh dear. not a good idea. Oh dear. When have you had reason not to trust me? Don't answer that, my friend. Ever? Just trust me. Uh, well, I, I guess I don't have much of a choice here. I might later. <laughs> but I mean, if I want to continue the quest, I guess I will have to um, agree to help him. It better work, though I'm skeptical. It's even worth sacrificing them as potential customers. Mm -hmm. So where exactly is that farm? Do you want the crops burned, too? They grow herbs. Harmless plants for medicine. It's just the silos that should go. Blow them up! Okay. And tell me more about these Cerberus brothers. You couldn't have mentioned there were three of them before? I thought it was implied. <laughs> Having triplets runs in their family. That's a lot of Cerberuses. Let's hope they don't procreate and have Cerberus puppies. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I guess I'll... Uh, Burn some silos for you. I'll pay their farm a visit. Give them a good scare. I'm pretty sure it's the farm at Astipalia City. Their goons are always hanging around. Got it. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Why am I doing this again? This is all kinds of shady. But okay, um... 
I guess for all time's sake, <laughs> we will continue to help him. Destroy the Cerberus Brothers grain silo. I mean, I'm pretty sure the first brother isn't dead either. I don't think the poison killed him. So, he might still want revenge as well. Alright, he has a silos. Um, let me try to find a somewhat hidden spot from where I can set them a flame. Because once I do it, people might get angry. Um, right, let's do some fire arrows. Oh, but I think I need to target the openings, right? That's one side of that. Alright. Yeah, maybe you should sh should leave and not stay near near the side when it's on fire. Um Yeah, I think if I want to destroy this one. <laughs> We will have to find a different different angle and I'm I'm getting bounties for these even though I wasn't really seen but I think that I think that always happens. So where Where's the opening for this one? Okay, it's over here. What the fuck? My silos! Stop! The <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I mean, aren't these like the Silas of the Cerberus Brothers? Because in that case, um, I I have to talk to Marcus again. Come on. Why won't you burn? Maybe I should shoot this one as well. One more silo to go. All right, there we go. And the final ones over here. Okay, that's our final silo. Um, where's the openings? One is on top. There we go. And <laughs> Now I'm out of arrows, figures. Um, yeah, let's craft more of them. Well I'll tell Marcos it made quite the impression. <laughs> Definitely. Blew up a bunch of innocent silos. <laughs> now, um, let's quickly get out of here before someone gets too angry at me. <laughs> All right, Marcus, I am back. The Cerberus should stay away from you now. Uh, well, maybe not after all. One of the farmers ran over. She was uh, not happy. Why? It seems I may have, or I, I did, accidentally, of course, of course, sent you to someone else's farm. Of course. It wasn't the Cerberus' <sighs> farm? I could have sworn it belonged uh, to the Cerberus. You have to believe me, my friend. Really? An honest mistake. An honest mistake. You should have made sure, you're an idiot, Marcus. I burned down an innocent farm. <laughs> well, well, I guess, as I say, 
don't attribute to malevolence what you can attribute to incompetence and I believe that he probably just made a mistake. It's still a stupid mistake, so yes, you're an idiot, Marcus. Malaka! Marcus, sometimes I wondered how you walk around with a brain so small. <laughs> you don't mean that. Come on, think of all these smart things I've done. Remember the Cyclops' eye? <sighs> Another mess. You've known me longer than anyone. If you can't forgive me, Cassandra, who can? Someone with more patience. Are you going to make me beg? <laughs> because I'll beg! Spare me from the Cerberus! Marcos! Have I led you down the wrong path? A few times, <laughs> yes. Many times, maybe. Mm -hmm. But this is it for me, my friend. Uh, oh dear, Marcos. You're being very manipulative again, and you're an idiot, but... I guess I still don't want you to get hurt. I can't keep you safe if you keep getting into trouble, Marcos. Think back to that sunny day when I found you, Cassandra. That was your day of need, and Marcos came to the rescue. <laughs> Come to my rescue today! I've paid you back plenty. That I can't deny. But the Cerberus will come with its dogs and its devotees and I'll be finished. Protect me and we'll come out on top. There's that we again. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You protect me and you get Mama's beloved battle axe. She used to be quite the fighter, <laughs> believe it or not. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. I'll protect you. Not sure if you deserved it, but I guess I'll do it. All right, let's keep you alive. Oh, I've never heard words more sweet. <laughs> You'll never get rid of me now. That's why I do what I do. And it's more like a threat, time, to be honest. I hear them approaching. Uh, of course. All right, Marcos. This is it. The grand um, finale. Well, are you are you going to come here? Well, here they are. Um. Well, I might be able to just. Defeat them with my fists. Then again, there are quite a few of them, so I may have to resolve to more lethal methods after all. I kind of don't want to kill even more people for um, Marcus's stupidity, but um, yeah, I may not. I may not have a choice here because there's so many of them. And they clearly have no problems killing others, so I guess I shouldn't, shouldn't show so much restraint. Right. You're dead. You're dead. Um, and it looks like the soldiers are actually on my side. Well, that's a nice, a nice change of pace. Usually, they always attack me if I fight other people. We did it, my friend. I'd say I was invincible, but I don't want to jinx myself. Yes, <laughs> that's why you're alive. I joke, I joke. I owe you everything, Cassandra. For this, you get a lifetime supply of wine and my friendship. Lucky you. Oh, and Mama Zax. Life will now be simple. All thanks to you. It's always thanks to you. Mm -hmm. a less dramatic life is just what you need, Marcos. Go now and adventure. Come back any time for that cup of wine. Right. We'll see about that. Yeah, as long as it's not poisoned again, I may take you up on that. Everybody benefits. Well, I'm not so sure about that. There are certainly a few people here that did not benefit. Like all these thugs, or the people whose farm I just burnt. <laughs> but okay, it still was nice uh, seeing Marcos again, I suppose. Now, back to what's important. My wine and my mama. Right, right. Um, I hope, I hope you're going to be happy with your mama and your new vineyard, and I hope you actually stay out of trouble. <laughs> but okay, um, it looks like we finished this quest line. Yep, all we have are like these temporary ones, and 
um, that main mission that I want to save for later. So yeah, I guess um, I will leave Kos in the next episode and I will continue with the other side mission that was recommended to me, which is um, all the way over here, I think, in Lochris. One really, really bad day. <laughs> Can it get any worse than this day? We'll find out in the next episode. So as always, thank you for watching and see you again next time.